All right. So what I want to do right now is introduce the Dirac delta function. The Dirac delta function. And I'm going to introduce it through a question. And that question is, what is the charge distribution for a point particle? So, so what do I mean by that? So back in back in ENM, uh, we saw a bunch of different types of charge distribution. So for example, uh, one one that we got familiar with was the thick slab of charge. Uh, we we worked with this. We 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 did some ENM with this. We also saw things like a sphere of charge. Or, or even a thick wire of charge. But one thing that we never looked at was the charge distribution for just a single point particle. And what we want to do now is figure out, okay, well, what is the charge distribution for that? What, what, what does that actually look like as a function? Uh, so, okay, well, yeah, <laughs> how, are we gonna, how are we gonna try and figure that out? So, one thing that you could do is you could say, well, let's, let's start by approximating it. Uh, and and the way that we could do that is we could say, all right, in one dimension, let, let's say a, a fair approximation might be that uh, a point particle is just a Gaussian distribution. And you might say, okay, well, that's kind of getting there. It has the right features. It's, it's sort of localized here at a single point, but it's still got these tails. And and you don't want tails if it's really if it really is just a point particle. You know, there, there shouldn't be this, these these big tails. So, okay, well, what's the next best thing you could do? Well, you could you could try and you know de decrease the size of the tails. So you can you can make this a bit more sharp, make this distribution a bit more sharp. And okay, well, you're you're getting a little bit better now, but you still have tails. So so what do you do? You know, we re re we really wanted we really want some. Some function, some distribution that just describes a single point particle, no, no, no breadth to it. So, what do you do? Well, you take it one step further. You, you, you take the limit where your Gaussian becomes so, so thin that it has no width. It's, it's really just a, a straight, a straight line right at the origin. And really, what we're saying mathematically when we say that is that we're saying that our distribution for a point particle which is going to be delta of x, or which is going to be the direct delta function, is equal to, well, what's happening? We're taking a limit of a Gaussian distribution where the width goes to zero, and that's that. And I'll circle this. So, so this is this is one way of defining the distribution for a point particle, or, or of defining the direct delta function. Saying that, uh, saying that we're going to take a Gaussian distribution centered at some point, and we're going to take the limit where that thing becomes infinitely peaked. So that way, there's no there's no breadth to it. There's just that single point, and that's it. That's that's how that's one way for us to uh, describe the distribution of a point particle. Now let's um, you know it, it's not just as easy as that. Let's let's take a little bit of a closer look at some of the properties of this. So um, one thing that we can say about delta is that well delta of x we know that in this limit uh, if you're if you're anywhere off of the the middle here. So if you're if you're this point right here or or this point, then in that limit where the width goes to zero, you're going to get pushed down to zero. And so what am I really saying there? I'm saying that if you're off of that center point, that is if x is not equal to zero in this case, um, then you're gonna be equal to zero. And I kind of wrote that backwards, but yeah. So, 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 so we're saying that, all right, this delta function here is equal to zero. If you're not exactly on the point particle, if you're, if you're not exactly on your particle, then you're, you then you're equal to zero because there's you know this if this is if this is some charge distribution then where there's no particle there's no charge it's got to be equal to zero. Likewise, um, uh, likewise, uh, likewise we can say that okay uh, delta of x is equal to zero everywhere um, where the particle isn't. Well, where it is, what happens? Um, in order for this thing to be uh, integrated to one, or in, or in order for this, you know, this is a Gaussian, for this thing to be normalized, if it becomes infinitely thin, it's got to become infinitely tall. 
So what happens we're at, at x equals zero, and the delta function blows up to infinity. And I'll, and I'll circle this as well. So this is this is one other thing, or, or no, another property of the delta function, which is that um, if, if you're a point particle, um, if, if, you, if, you, if this is a distribution for a point particle, if you're off the particle, it's zero. If you're on it, it's infinity. So, uh, okay, that's that's all good. Um, so, so what, what is that? What 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 actually happens when we do an inter an integral then? You know, with, with with charge distributions and all of this stuff, really what we care about is you know we, we have we have the distribution, but really we want to integrate it either to find the charge um, or to find something associated with it. So, uh, what happens here if we integrate this? Well, uh, let's say we want to integrate just delta of x from minus infinity to infinity. Well, this is just a Gaussian. I mean, uh, I mean it's a limit of a Gaussian, but it, it has the same properties of a Gaussian. And one of those properties is that it's normalized. So if we integrate over this whole thing, we get one. Okay, that's, uh, I'll, I'll move this over here because this is actually, um, this is actually really important. So let's let's take a second to think about this, right? So originally, so so we have all of these properties here that that are true for the delta function, but some of them, when combined together, seem a little bit weird. So let, let's look at this right here real quick. So if I had told you, for example, um, that I wanted to integrate, say, the following function, I want I want to integrate. Uh, this function right here with a hole in it. What would you say? You would say, okay, well, you know, I remember from calculus that uh, if you want to integrate something like this, then what you do is, well, what you find your bounds of integration, you take the area, but this single point right here, this single hole doesn't contribute to the integral because a single point has no volume. Well, wait a minute. What we said over here was that this delta function is zero everywhere except for a single point. But somehow that single point is adding to the integral. So what's what's going on here? This seems to be contradictory. So the answer is that we, we've done some very weird stuff here. I mean, so so what, what we're doing right here is, isn't actually something that you're allowed to do with a, a normal function. And in fact, uh, the delta function isn't a function. Delta is not a function. In fact, it's something more general. It's it's what's called a distribution or a generalized function. And really, all that means for us right now is just that we can treat delta pretty much how we would treat any other ordinary function, with the caveat that when we integrate it, uh, there's only going to be one point that contributes. So when we do normal integration, we ignore single points. But now when we have this delta function here, single points become very important. Um, and because of that, we can have, you know, this funny definition of the delta function like this, where, uh, where it's only defined to be non-zero at a single point, but when we integrate it, we get something that's non-zero. So uh, that that's a whole lot on the introduction to the delta function and, and so sort of how you define it now i want to talk a bit about well okay well how, how do we actually use this thing and they'll get into that in the next video